you have to understand uh, that the attack over your life is so prevalent. It is heavy. It is bigger. It is different now because you are at a different level. It is that we find John chapter 6 uh, where it is that he says to his disciples that he chose 12 of them. And he says to them, didn't I choose you? All y'all 12 and one of you is the devil. How is it that I've, I've come off the mountaintop? I'm not as high as I was anymore. I'm in my humble state of being and I still can't find good friends. It is some people find themselves in this position more often than not. And I don't know if you can resonate with this word or not and be honest in yourself and say, Jeremiah, you're right on today. Is that doc, I'm right there with you. This is my testimony to the max. I cannot find good friends. Everybody I find, either folk trying to play me, folk, folk trying to sell me for the best being, folk, folk trying to deny that they know me around other people, is that everybody wants to go to the mountaintop, but nobody wants to suffer through the valley situation. Consequently, today's word is I can't keep any good friends. Nobody really wants to be there in the trenches. Nobody really want to uh, heal you when it is you are unwhole and you're broken. It is everybody is around when he's feeding the 5,000. Everybody is around when it is he's healing blind people. Everybody want to get close to him when he's healing issues of blood and raising the dead. It is when he has a multitude of fish and they need to go across the sea, we all depend on them. But when is it? that I'm in a situation where in Luke 22 and 23, I need my disciples. I need my friends. I need those people where I've been there for them. Now I need just a little bit of support. Don't need the money. I ain't, I ain't calling flags for a favor. I don't, I don't really need you to step up or testify. All I need you to do is be there for me and you can't even do that. Before it is that they walk up and kiss him on the cheek before, before he has to heal a man's ear that my friend cut off. Before any of that, they sleep on me. When is it that the people that's closest to you, that know your struggle, know your fight, know the assignment, they can attest and testify that it is you are called one of the Lord. Is that they know the gift is so heavy because you've been under attack so prevalently. And you're trying to tell them, warn them in a spiritual sense, is that I'm not who I used to be. I'm different now. In my difference, I understand, I see, I can project, I can tell you that it is the enemy is going to attack. And all I need you to do is stay awake and pray with me. Every time I find myself in a situation when I'm asking for help, why is nobody awake? Is that I'm always there and I can't reach nobody. I'm always responding, but I can't get a response. I'm always FaceTiming, but I can't get an answer. It is that you find yourself in a place like the Lord did. He is betrayed by a friend, denied by a brother, turned away, looked down on, insulted all night long, beaten. And it is that the people who's hurting me it's the one I'm helping. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you at. I don't know what you've been facing or what you've been going through, but I feel like I can serve as testimony of somebody in the room on today and let you know that I feel where you're coming from. You've been hurt one too many times. You've been in a fight one too many years. You've been going through the struggle, the strain, and the stress for just a little bit too long. And I've come to a place where it is Jesus is on the cross and he says, I thirst. He said, I'm tired of everybody taking from me. I'm tired of subjecting myself to, to healthy when it's everybody else can eat what they want to eat. I'm, I'm tired of subjecting myself to biting my tongue when it is everybody else giving me a piece of their mind. I'm, I'm tired of holding everything in and I don't ever say anything because I don't want to offend nobody. I'm, I'm tired, I'm tired. I'm tired of people not even wanting me but wanting what's attached to me. I'm tired. 
I'm tired of folk coming to me, always getting something from me, but never have anything to offer. Is that he is between two thieves? That one is robbing him, trying to rob him of his glory, and the other one is doing what he's used to doing. He's trying to steal his way into heaven. Even when you doing me bad, I'm still doing you good. I'm tired of folk in this season where the Bible says that they didn't want him, but they gambled for his clothes. They would auction his clothes off. How is it you found value in my stuff and not find value in my status? Is that I am the person I'm meant to be. I'm everything I'm supposed to be. I'm all that I need to be in this season is that it is God with motion and mission for us to be in a particular position for how it is that we can handle the attack and still not fight back is that people are doing you absolutely dirty folk playing you like you were absolute idiot they will be playing you the entire time is that they know you need help and they still won't answer. They know you coming to get what's yours and they pretend like they sleeping. They pretend like they didn't see the message. They pretending like they don't owe you anything. How is it you can offend me and then you offended that I'm offended when you did the wrong? I can't find no good friends. And Jesus yells out, in his dire situation, I'm thirsty. And what you bring me is alcoholic? When is it that you know I can't do that? Hear me now. You know I've been struggling. You know I can't take on that kind of strain, that kind of stress, that kind of situation. And I'm asking for help. And the only thing you can give me is something to make me act up. Listen to me. You have to be careful of people in this season who seem to want to be helping you, but they come bearing something resembling alcohol. They're trying to get you out of character. They're trying to get you to come out of box, out of pocket. Is that they see the changes you've gone through, but they don't really like the fact that you're different than they are. Hear me now. They don't like how it is that God is moving in your season on your behalf in your favor. They would do anything to discount your character, to discount your credit, to discount the character rising person that it is that God is projecting you to be. They want to diminish the change that is happening over your life. See, they thought they could play you and nothing be done about it because it is you already have no friends. They thought they could take from you and get away with it because nobody would hold them accountable. They thought they could leave you for dead, but my God told me to tell, hear me now, three people on every platform that it is God is moving you to a more ordained place a more projected place and a more protected place. Consequently, we find here where it is Jesus said, Father, where you going? Why have you forsaken me? He said, son, I've, I've got to handle something. God told me there are people he's moving out of your life in this season because it is they meant you no good in the first place. Hear me now, when it is God will turn his face, the veil in the temple is torn. Graves are open up. The church is torn in half. The whole earth shakes. And I tell you on a day, they don't know who they playing with. You better warn them folk, give them fair warning, give them caution. Put the sign out there in the road. You do not want to mess with me. You, you do not want to play over my life. You do not even want to speak bad over me. Touch not my anointing. I can't keep good friends, but that's a good thing. But though friends are few, God is favorable. Though I cannot keep good friends, I can keep a good God.